Steve here, Off-Road Grind, and Foreigner, awesome vehicle. Just came back from Colorado. We were there for a week skiing, and I noticed a bit of a weird smell coming out from the rear wheel here, right rear wheel. And when we got home, I couldn't really notice it when we were out and about. When we came home, I noticed this oil leaking all around the inside of the rear wheel here. And it doesn't smell like brake fluid. So I'm thinking it's probably a seal on the rear axle, but I'm not sure. Hopefully it's not a brake caliper, although that would be easy to fix, potentially, I don't know. So I'm gonna pop this wheel off, take a look at what it is, and uh, maybe I need a new bearing, or at the very least an uh, axle seal. We'll find out. Here we go. Okay, I believe, so I can see the oil in here. It's not looking like brake fluid to me. It smells pretty gross. I think that's gear oil. <clears throat> so I'm thinking these brake pads are gonna need to be replaced because they are going to be um, soaked in oil. You can see it up here. So I'm gonna pop this off, take the caliper off, get into the, the inside here and take a look at that. Okay, that's not a good sign. <laughs> Pretty sure that's where the oil's coming from. Gross. I'm gonna pop the caliper apart. I was gonna try and do it with keeping it all together, but I'll just take this outer part off. I recently replaced all the brakes on the truck. I set all the calipers and the rotors. And yeah, that's not looking so good. Put that oil in there. Ugh. Yeah, okay. That smells like the gear oil. It's not brake fluid, that's for sure. Okay. So. Um, yeah, we've got oil all around the inside here. Brake shoes are soaking wet now. I have brand new ones that I didn't put in when I replaced the brakes, so it looks like I'm gonna have an opportunity to do that now because I'm gonna have to take this apart to get at the axle and the hub to take a look at what's going on in there to see if it's the seal or the bearing as well. So I'll come on back when we start taking this apart and get in there and see what's up. Twenty-four. Okay, so here's kind of the oil. Doesn't look terrible. I 
I replaced it August, I think, 2020. It's about it's a year and a half ago. 20,000 miles. So, probably do for it anyway, so that's okay. Here's where we are so far. About to take this all apart. I'm gonna cut a little groove in the top of the cable here because I don't wanna have to take these out. Just enough to pop this little line here up through the top. And then I'm gonna undo the ABS sensor, undo these four bolts back here to release the axle. Um, and then um, also before I get all that done, undo this parking brake thing here as well. Um, Gotta undo these top clips here and some of these little side pin springs and we've got a little adjuster on the bottom here but it's got to come out as well this is probably going to be the hardest part of the whole deal is messing with the parking brake but that's okay and um, these are pretty soaked full of oil so I'm gonna replace these they're pretty much the same size as the new ones in terms of thickness where's the new stuff over here there's the hardware kit so we have that set and the brake pads are the same thickness so that's going to help because um, i don't really feel like doing the left side right now i'll wait till that seal goes and then i'll do it so anyways okay so let's grind this out pop this off to undo the abs take the brake apart and then i'll Mess with the four bolts in the back and uh, pull the axle out and uh, get that seal done. I'm gonna have to undo that bracket over here. Perfect, there we go. It's gonna take that bracket right off. And it's just a little 10 millimeter nut on there. Just wiggle that thing right off there. And you can see that it's just covered in oil. Gross. Okay, so be careful with that. Put that nut back on so I don't lose it. Okay, we're gonna take these springs off here. These are the front. Um, this one looks like it needs to come off first, so. There we go. So this is interesting. I think there's supposed to be a spring. I see one in the back here, but I think there's supposed to be a spring that's hooked onto that and goes to here as well. It looks like it's a, a lower return spring, but I don't see anything in this area. So next step is to take this adjuster, lower adjuster off here, which is pretty straightforward. That's the thing that we use to turn. You're going to go through a little hole here. You're going to line that up and then you use your screwdriver to move that forward or down to tighten it or loosen it. 
Okay, so now we've got to get access to this little, this spring in here, and it's called the front shoe hold down spring. And we're gonna press it on the retainer and turn it. I had the other tire on the ground, so I just had to jack it up in order to move the, the hub assembly here over so I can get a screwdriver in here. There we go. Yeah, that's it. So I had to grab that center pin and then um, turn it relative to that little collar and then that just popped off. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Do the same on the back side. Wait, maybe if I can push this in this way. And turn it. Oh yeah, that's gonna work. That's what we need. There we go. Oops. Yeah, so holding it in the back there with that pry bar seems to do the trick because that allowed me to turn the whole thing without the pin also going in. Sweet, so we got that right on. Okay, and then this little pin here just is out. There we go. And this whole system just pops off. And there's the clip, I think, for the emergency brake. Yeah. And it looks like it's just a little cable. It slides off there like that. Okay, so that's a 10 millimeter. Surprise. Surprise. Oh, there's another one there. Underneath the spring, I couldn't see it. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Okay. That was it. Okay, so that's coming out. Excellent. Okay, well, that'll come off when I'm pulling the sucker off. Okay. I'm going to take those four backing bolts off and then pull that axle out. It looks like it would be a little tough to get in there with an impact gun. So thinking these guys will work. Okay, it's a 17 millimeter. Come on, there we go. That's the bottom. Okay, so these are coming off. I'm gonna get that bolt nut off and then I'll be back. Okay, four bolts are back off on the back of the assembly here. So this should just pull out. Yep. And I'm gonna pull that out for now. And that's the seal that I bought to replace. Now it does say to replace this outer O-ring here. I am not gonna do that. Oh, I hope that's supposed to be there. I'll check. And uh, pop that little seal out, replace that. And um, get it all back together. So I cleaned that off, just hit it with some brake cleaner and then pop some oil back in the bottom part here. As you can see, some gear oil. And I think this is causing the issue with the leaking. Looks like that's torn a bit.
Yeah, I was going to leave that O-ring in there. Maybe I should have gotten another one, but I didn't. And clean this surface up. And I checked the bearing there on the wheel, and it was nice and solid. I don't feel any glue going around on that. So it says pop the new seal in, put a little bit of oil on it, obviously, and then pop it in with the socket. And I've got a 35 millimeter socket I think I used for the front axle. So let me find that and I'll... Okay, so here is the new seal. 9031058003. And apparently it's the same for either the left or the right side. So that's my socket that I thought was going to be big enough is not, so I'll just put some steel on here and tap it in smoothly. Anticipating this is going to be pretty firm. Steel here and on the side, so I can see what I need to tap first. Use the old seal to distribute some of the force. Oh yeah, that's working. Okay, cool. So I am ready to get that actual shaft back in there. So I'll just pop a little bit of oil in here. All in this area. Just using some cure oil here. And crease up that inner. I'm going to check the, the actual, 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 actual axle shaft. Make sure there's no burrs or anything on that. Lightly grease that up and then carefully slide this back in here. Make sure that's clean. I don't feel any burrs or anything. So I clean this all off with brake clean and wipe it down good with some clean shop rags. That seemed to be doing the trick. I don't feel any drip or anything on there. This is all in with the axle. Uh, differential oil anyway so that gets kind of grubby so I'm not too concerned about it being perfectly clean okay there we go okay before
before I put this back in. I've got to, I think, spin this around. Somehow there's these pins. These pins here, I'm gonna have to replace these. And I think they're in the hardware kit, so let me find that. Yeah, I see that one. Okay. One and one. Should be two for each. Okay, there's. So I'm gonna replace these now. I think it's probably gonna, I might be able to do it afterwards, but it just seems like I would be able to do this a lot easier now. So it's, so I just pulled the old one out here. So put that one in. Oh yeah, I could probably get this out later. We'll do it now. So obviously, I want to be careful about that seal and not touch it. I have no idea what's going on at the end there, but I can feel resistance. Supposed to meet up with something. There we go. There we are. Okay. just wiggled it into place and obviously that looks pretty good there's the speed sensor goes in here I've got to line the parking brake back up pull it through this little hole here put those two screws back in and then jack around with this sucker okay so let me reverse order I'm gonna tighten these four bolts up and they Get torqued down to backing plate nuts, 91 foot pounds. Okay. I'll do that first and then um, actually I'm gonna pull this parking brake in first in case I can't do that. can't do this with it in place. I'm gonna have to pull it out a little bit. But I think I can get it in. There we go. Okay, so that's good. That's in place. So I'll put these bolts back in, do the backing plates, torque those into place, and then I'll start pushing that uh, parking brake mechanism back in. Be back. Okay, we got these little parking brake retainer bolts in, and I've got the backing plate nuts snugged up consistently. And so now I've always had this issue if I can't get a torque wrench in there, how do I figure out what torque value I'm at? So I'm thinking what I'm going to do here is, well, I think I've got them all at pretty much the same torque consistency. So I got my torque wrench set to 91 
So I'm gonna push it around and see how far it turns. And let's say it goes an extra quarter turn or whatever. Well, in the areas I can't get the torque wrench in, I'm gonna do that with the wrench. So let's try that. So that's... This one here, you need that pin in the back, for this parking brake arm. So let's take that off. That's not gonna work. Okay, I'm gonna go to the vise and take that off. I'm just gonna hit that with a hammer and that should pop out. Yep, there it goes. Okay. Okay, because that looks like it's the same thickness as that. Pretty close, and this one's mangled anyway, so. Okay, please go on there. There we go. Is it on there? Yes. Okay. Okay, so that, I think that's where that should go. Okay, so let's tap that on. thinking just squeezing this together is going to work. Like that. There we go. Okay. I like it. Okay. I seem to remember so I've got these these guys here and that's those little springs that I had to fix with the little uh, caps on them so that's the inner cap goes there like that and then that goes on there. I seem to remember the last thing I took off was the parking brake so I'm going to put that on first though. This is the one here with the parking brake lever on because that parking brake lever here has to fit in there. So I'm gonna put that up through here. There might be something else I need to do first, so. Okay, so that's in. So what I'm 
I'm trying to do here? I don't know if you can see that. Got to get this little arm hooked onto that little hole here. That hole right there. And then this arm fits in there. Okay, now, So I'm a little cautious about moving it right now, but I think I got everything in place, more or less. So I'm gonna create some, keep some tension on there, and try and move it underneath. Okay, one thing I think I probably should have done before I put that stupid ass brake shoe in is a little bit of grease. So I'm gonna put some on here. And then you can see the little wear marks on the side here. Right there. Right there. And obviously the same on the other side. I don't have to get in there. on there. That just slides in to that little groove over there and then the other shoe, the front shoe, pops onto that there. I'm gonna take a look at the video, I'll make sure that's the right thing. Okay so that's that was the right way to put the whatever that thing is called, spacer or something. Okay so let's tackle this side here. So same little pin here, put that in there and I wonder if I'm gonna to have to put the um, zip ties on this guy. Feeling like I do. Come on, get in there. We'll find out. <laughs> this is going to be a pain in the ass. This can't be harder than the other side. It's being passwords. Okay. I hope I can get these out. <laughs> Imagine I can get a pair of snips in there. We'll find out. Okay. Seriously? <laughs> Come on. Oh, my God. Okay. There we go. Okay, so that's. 
That should make it easier without that spring pulling on things. Okay, well that was a struggle. I ended up grabbing the end of the spring and then just dragging it across and then it popped in. So I'm just gonna pop these little zip ties off, I hope. Hmm, maybe. So close. Perfect. Okay. Whew. And so now I'm just trying to get this top spring here back up into a little hole. Up in there. I'm gonna bring that to that hole. But this can come in too, so that combination should work. Okay. So, got the top springs in, the top bracket, and the spring in. Hope those are in. Yeah, that's good. Zip ties are off. Now I gotta get the bottom stuff. Too big. So I tried to put this on and it wasn't fitting on. It's kind of tacking onto the brake shoes, so I can dial this down a little bit. So I can still access that gear in here. So I'm 
tighten it up so I got resistance on that little gear. And I shouldn't be able to turn this too easily. Yeah, I think that's on. Hit the parking brake, it should be, I think I'm supposed to get about seven or eight clicks on the parking brake, and then that should snug up into the inside of that drum. on it so this should be locked up yep that's good okay i think i'm good there on the other side. so i think i'm good here got some anti-seize as you saw on there i'm gonna put a bit on the outside here and then uh keep that wheel spacer on Good, 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 good. Nice. Oil and grease that I put on here is going to blow. Tighten that up, the um, backing bolts there. These guys, this one here and that one. Find out what the torque is for those and tighten those up. Okay, so these are 77. out of the way. There we go. Okay. A little bit of grease, brake grease on the smidge. I didn't have it pushed in far enough, that's why. Okay, speed sensor, backing bolts, parking brake. Okay, I think I'm good. So we're gonna pop the wheel spacer back on, get the wheel on, and um, see if it works. <laughs> okay, we got the wheel back on, so that's good. And now, tackle that rear differential 
and fill that up with some fluid. And I think it takes 3.2 quarts. So I have four one quart bottles. So we'll get on that and get that done. Okay, both the train and the filler. 36 foot pounds. Not super. So then, filling this up, I'm gonna use a pump. I got a pump, but I'm also gonna just it takes about three quarts. So, pumps a pain in the butt. So I'm just gonna push this in first. Actually, I've got some oil in a pump here. So I'll just show you how this all works. If you haven't used one of these before, super simple. Pump with the little on the top. Just stick that in there and okay, so I've got about mm, two and a half in, I think. Remember how much was in that first bottle. So I might get through this whole one here before it starts tripping out. Probably not quite this whole bottle. It's supposed to take 3.2 quarts. So I expect to see it starting to come out of the train for too long. I think we're at the capacity. We are good. So, clean that up. Pop that drain plug back on. And 36 PSI, or foot pounds, and then we're good. We got it done, yeah. So just cleaned up the driveway because I made a bit of a mess. And all set. So took it for a spin around the neighborhood. Everything looks great. Um, no leaking. And uh, just power washed everything because it was pretty grimy in there. I wipe it down a bit more. But yep, pretty happy with that. It's looking good. Sounds good, and I think that's gonna do the trick. So I'll keep an eye on that, make sure that the replacing the seal is the thing that I needed to do, but I'm pretty sure that little tear in the seal was not there. Um, I don't think I hit that with the axle, so pretty sure that's probably what caused it, and got an OEM Toyota seal in there, so I think that's gonna do the trick. So thanks for checking it out. Hopefully that was useful information. I'll try and edit this so it's uh, not too long, but there's a lot going on with that freaking emergency brake and getting that back together. So have a great day. Thanks for checking the things out. Bye.